James Ryan. Ryan. Hello there. Welcome very good morning. Shoreditch. Thank you very much. I haven't said that in a long time. What actually. a space. Thanks. Cool. Th- this is temporary. <laughs> the new space that I'm trying to buy around the corner will be like mega. And actually... Like part of the reason you're here is to get free art for that place. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Done. <laughs> um, Sounds like a great deal. Yeah. So when uh, when I first heard about you, mm-hmm. I heard art gallery. Yes. East End. Perfect. This area. Mm-hmm. NFTs. Yes. Despite my interest. Yeah. Because I did a video saying NFTs are uh, like fire festival yeah. back in the day. Yeah. When people were buying board apes for like 400 grand, mm-hmm. and now they're worth. What, they what, what are they worth? I mean, uh, well, I don't know. Hundreds of dollars, maybe. What yeah, anyone's about. prepared to pay, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, we like look at... art, really. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> so yeah, no. So when um, I saw the articles, actually, I saw some funny articles about um, people. We'll get into that about okay. people. Get, get, <laughs> I feel like you get glamour. Sick. You loaded up. Yeah, no, 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 not at all. I, I just thought you were an interesting character yeah. to talk to. So, yeah. um, so. Yeah, tell us about yourself. Um, obviously, you don't want to spend 10 minutes like just waffling, but yeah. you're an art gallery owner. Yes. You're into crypto, Bitcoin, mm-hmm. et- uh, ETFs, that's something else. Yes, that. yes. NFTs. Yes. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself. So I had an art gallery, which I started about five years ago, just a normal traditional gallery in Fitzrovia. And then one morning, my well, the guy that was doing all the web sort of techie stuff, I'm not a very techie person, Um, I can just about turn the computer on, genuinely. So he said, you've got to jump on this NFT thing. And I was like, what's that that then? And he started telling me what he was doing. And that's great. Dismissive at first. And then he was more or less showing me, like, you know, this is what I have made. And he was talking about virtual racehorses in some weird space. And I was like, okay, you know, how do you actually cash that in? Because I've always been a property, gold, watches, you know, physical, tangible things to put money into. And we had a conversation and he said, look, trust me, let's let's become Europe's first NFT gallery. So when we was lo- this? When was this? This was uh, October 21. Okay. So there's me not knowing anything about NFTs, nothing really about crypto. My partner at the time in the business knew and was doing very well out of crypto. And we looked at a space down the road, Fashion Street, very iconic, um, you know, street, well-known street, and we were just blown away. So we went, yeah, let's do it. So we set up Qantas Gallery, which remains to this day. And we were PR'd very, very well. And we had unbelievable sort of opening, fantastic, you know, group of people that came down. And it was Europe's first NFT gallery. But I was never the NFT guy. (laughs) 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 I just want to kind of get that out there. So um, my key thing, and thank fuck we did this, it was a case of we need to have, if I'm involved, there has to be, a tangible piece of art yeah. attached to any purchase. Yeah. Otherwise, it is literally just thin air. Yeah, yeah. It is a JPEG. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> the gallery just had loads of screens. So it was just like, we, let's go out and buy these specialist screens to actually showcase the art. Yeah. So, so we did that. Electricity bill was absolutely enormous. And I just couldn't believe what, was happening because I, I got interviewed by uh, the Telegraph at the time with a couple of the partners in the business. And we how, how it came about was not only did we get the space, but we started advertising. So we actually started lead campaigns, okay? And the lead campaigns were just bananas, as in thousands of people a day from all across the world were like, how do I buy? What do you recommend I buy? And one of the guys was, you know, the partners was like, I told you, I told you. <laughs> and I was like, no. So then it was a logistical problem of who actually contacts those people because yeah, yeah. there were so many, yeah. we needed a, a big team. So we did this big recruitment drive, people with experience in art, people with experience in sales, tech, etc. And we had to literally give them like a crash course on what NFTs were. So we literally had people go, what are NFTs? And we had to, you know, go through it. And 
then it was a case of right we've got all these inquiries how viable is this you like are these real inquiries and people genuinely wanting to buy and they did and they were and we were we were you know turning over a lot of money in the early stages so i'm now at january 22 january 22 right the way through to april 22 may ish it was just bananas um like loads of business coming through, lots of purchases, people just absolutely going for it. You know, like art we discuss, you'd have to go through the artist's background, but people were just like, how do I buy? Someone's told me I need to buy an NFT. What do you advise? What, and what, um, go on. what type of people were these? Everyone. Were they like, like, were they young people? No. Just like, no, just everyone. I, I, when I mean everyone, I, if if we were to do a split, we're talking about 45, 55, male to female. Age ranges anywhere from 20 right the way through to 60-year-olds. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's not me trying to you know, avoid the question. Everyone. Um, and, yeah, it was, it was absolutely mad. So the reason I mentioned the Telegraph, because we were doing so well, I had this, like... Um, US attorney come in who was talking about us expanding over to New York. And he was like, look, if you're doing this here, this is, I'm not going to try and do his, an accent. If you're doing this here, just imagine what you can do in the States. And you sort of like get, you know, blinkered to it. You kind yeah. of like have your, you know, your shoulders massage and your ego massage a bit. And you're like, yeah, this, yeah. And he said, look, this is what the business could be worth. You know, I think it's talking about 70, 80 million quid dollars. So we did this interview with the Telegraph and they went, this is this business is going to be worth 76 million pounds, you know, next year. Yeah. And it just went mad again, honestly. So, so this is all in a space of like four months. Yes. Wait, wait. At the end of uh, 21, mm -hmm. that was the peak, mm -hmm. right? It, it was, I think it was around November mm -hmm. was the peak mm -hmm. and then it all crashed. So uh, Crash was really what, April, May 22? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, is, and is that when it all changed? Yeah. What yeah. happened there? So it was... <laughs> <laughs> so... You cancelled the yacht. <laughs> <laughs> Maxing out credit cards. Um, no, it was... <laughs> it literally... <laughs> it, everything that you would predict would happen, happened. Um, so there's three, three partners in the business. <laughs> there's myself, another guy... And someone that's still with the business today that just runs the the back end, you know, tech side of the website and yeah. you know, developing graphic design, etc. Yeah. And one of the partners just absolutely lost his head. He thought he was Mark Zuckerberg, um, as in like he thought he was going to change the world and literally live that yacht lifestyle with four months worth of work. So we <laughs> we had a clash, and I had to give him a reality check, and I said, look you're done, you know, you, you're done. I mean, not going home yeah. in the, you know, coming into work at six o'clock in the morning. You can't have that as yeah. one of the founders. So he went and I was like, look, we are fortunate that we've only got involved in about four or five NFT projects, all of which bar one had physical art attached. So we can get out you know, we can, yeah. we can get out of it and turn the gallery from NFTs and TVs only into a normal, fully functional, operational gallery, yeah. so to speak. Um, but yeah, it literally, we went from, uh, without giving too, you know, too much away, we went, we probably lost revenue as much as about 99.9%. .9 yeah. Like that. Overnight. Yeah. So you stopped going on right me for <laughs> in New York. For like, <laughs> yeah, Call no, the missus, cancel I, that plan, yeah. The reason I find it funny is because I lived through this since 16 with Bitcoin, gone mm -hmm. through like two of these cycles. And like, I, know the I know the deal. I'm on, I'm on like Yacht World, <laughs> looking at like yachts thinking, oh, Bitcoin's going to Yacht 200K. Yacht broker's calling you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. Like, like fucking test drives yeah, yeah. in my head, you know. <laughs> so I know, so... But with the f a physical gallery that's like, you know, it, it's got all your customers are like overnight and then yeah. gone overnight. Yeah. That to me, that like when I look at the next bull run, which we're about to hit, mm. because before, I don't know how long you've been in Ethereum. Mm. That was my original. Um, you had like a kitties, like a, what do you call it? Kitties. 
they they were on the previous cycle. Yeah. I don't know if you know this. No. Um, it was called something kitties. I have to um, find out. But um, yeah. there was like a game. But it was a bit like NFTs. But it, it it made it like it made Ethereum like valuable because it was on the Ethereum blockchain. Yeah. Um. So people were buying these kitties, playing this game, and they were like, "Oh my god!" Blah, blah, blah. Then next cycle, <laughs> NFTs came along, which yeah. was like this like exploded version of this this thing. <laughs> And um, on steroids, it was like yeah. pure on steroids. And uh, my head could not get around why people were buying. I was the same. Though. The only reason, because they thought it was going to be worth more. Yeah. That so it was the, an investment, purely an investment concept. And and the 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 issue that I had with people that were buying was they were doing it like purely with the intention of I'm going to double my money. Make money, yeah. And that's cool, but I'm talking about people that I'm very much or have been taught and learnt yeah. through burning fingers, yeah. there's no such thing as a get-rich-quick scheme. No. Right? We we'll both agree on that. We had people that were like, pulled it today on a Monday, what's it worth? And we're like, it's Tuesday. Yeah. You know? What do you mean, what's it worth? You told us to buy this. So we yeah, had yeah, that yeah. mentality, which was totally the wrong culture, but we're just accepting the business, accepting the business, not in truth, in hindsight, not really looking at the repercussions of, of the mindset of the buyer, you know, i.e. people that want to make money within a month. Yeah. So then you're having people going, well, what's it worth? And then when you're then having to tell them, look, the market has <laughs> done this, you can imagine, <laughs> right? You can only imagine. So I personally... Oh from one gallery to another, we must have funded it to the t tune of nearly a couple of million quid in the sense where we had one project that had failed, yeah. like disastrously so. So I then gave every single purchaser a credit note for physical art. So everything I'd made and some resulted in losses just, just so that we could save face and kick on because that gallery, Qantas, was linked to my other gallery and it would have just underpinned both. And it would, it would have, the reputation alone would have been through in the gutter. This so yeah. Crazy. Yeah. It's all in like four or five months. I basically. promise you it was, it was when we set it up in October 21, we only really kicked on and started trading in the January 22. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then obviously April, May. So that's three, four months. Yeah. That's but it, it was, it, oh, it was bonkers. Absolutely. Uh, the, the, the issue that I had is we were having like, I was meeting guys and I'm like, so how did you make your money? And they were like, Bitcoin and, you know, I've made 20 million, 50 million, whatever, you know, like straight out like that. Yeah, yeah. Happy to disclose it. And that's quite cool. Yeah, you yeah, know, that's yeah. quite open. And I was like, so what really like underpins your NFT idea or project? It's just like, well, you can, you know, join our club and do that. And I was like, I'm like, is it just me? <laughs> And then, like, I'm looking at other people in the room and, and I'm, like, sort of giving them that look and they're like, yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> no. So then I'll be looking over there thinking, he looks like he knows, knows what he's doing. I'm going to have a chat with him. Yeah. And he might be, like, a hedge fund guy or a private equity guy. I'm like, so what do you think about the security? Oh, it's, it's, it's the next thing. It's, the, it's a trend. Honestly. And everyone. Honestly. So I was going home to my missus going, oh, yeah. Because it happened to me. Dude, I was the same at the same time, right? Have you ever seen Zoolander? Yeah, yeah, Mugatu, yeah, yeah, and he's yeah, like, yeah, I feel yeah, like I'm yeah, taking yeah. crazy pills. <laughs> <laughs> I was like that. For about what six a months. shout that is, yeah. I have friends that are like big producers in TV, like huge, like next level producers of the biggest stuff ever. Yeah. Calling me about NFTs. Wow. I was going to their offices, like, yeah. these, like, and they're explaining, and I'm, I'm, they're like, oh, NFTs, we're doing all these like projects, we're blah, yeah. blah, blah. I was like, what? Okay, explain to me how an NFT is worth something. And they couldn't, but they they almost, I feel no like I, they've been brainwashed totally. into like there's a value. Yeah. And I just couldn't get my head around it, which is why I there was a, a part of me that was like, I need to buy one just yeah. like for 50 quid. Yeah. But then I did it. I didn't, yeah. didn't get involved. But then there was all these that, like, someone prodded me going, there's something in it. Yeah. And yeah, I'm like, yeah. but I can't see it. I can't <laughs> see it, you know? Maybe because I'd seen uh, the whole kitty thing before. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I thought, um, but, yeah, whether or not people were making... But the, here's the thing. Here's mm. the, 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 the problem nowadays is, like, TikTok. A trend can, like, pick up in a day and go the next day. Yes. Like, 
I'm old, older school yeah. where things took time. Value had to be mm-hmm. created uh, with a brand, blah, blah, blah. Had to blah. cultivate it, yeah. But now trends mm-hmm. like NFTs where people are just so blinded by things they think might have value because they don't want to miss out on opportunity. Yeah. And then they get... But when you actually asked back then, okay, what is it then? What, what, why, why is it going to go up? Yeah. It's just going to go up. It's just built on absolute sand yeah and um oh, it was it was uh, no regrets because you know you just can't have regret you know you learn yeah. learn from it all but the the best meeting i had towards the end of that cycle was with someone who said why don't you because i forgot missed a big thing out we set up our own platform so we were going to have create our this exchange right that was the next thing for us to do so we invested can i swear on here Mm? a fuckload of money how much what like hundreds of thousands into this platform built by top top developers and well you create your own token literally you just uh, uh, an uh, exchange like so so okay one of the partners in the business like, trust me, this is the next thing to do. And at the time, I was like, Whatever. you know, money's coming in. It's a sensible thing to do. And I then had to have that call with these developers to go, look, we're pausing, you know, because the market's doing this. And and there's no way we can we can um, sustain this. So, again, like I, I just, like, every now and then, I just get... <laughs> 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 and, it, and it's and it's that you know that one when you feel like you you know like your dead ghost walks yeah, through your yeah. body yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and that's happened a few times around that platform because like if you imagine just a fire it's just literally like having a suitcase of cash and just going yeah and watching it and that happened um, it, so so yeah the, the the only person that I spoke to that seemed to be sane in the mind said right. I get it. I understand your fears and concerns that everyone's on these like crazy pills right now. If you are able to have an an underlying asset, so to speak, you could turn that image, that NFT image, which is just that JPEG into merchandise. You can put it on merchandise and then start to sell and then give your, you know, the holders the royalty. And that was like, okay, there's something there, but by, by, but <laughs> finally, no, yeah, finally, finally some it, value. It's, it's better than we'll just come to a party. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm, I'm all right for parties. Thanks. Yeah. I'm talking about multimillionaires, shrewd operators that just couldn't tell me, couldn't make me. And it well, was like, why aren't you, why you don't, don't you get it? The thing is, is I, would t- the, I remember talking to someone like this. I had spent some affies on the podcast. Yeah. Really cool guy. Love him. We're yeah. really, like good friends. Yeah. And um, he was t- like selling me this like NFT project they were going to do. For, I was like, dude, you just stop. I was like, you've got to stop. Like, <laughs> would you tell him there and then? I was like, telling him oh, good, podcast, like, yeah. fair play to you. And um, just being honest, I was like, this is just stupid. Um, mm. Yeah, I just remember like everyone at the time was just like talking about it. It's just... I d- but I, d- yeah, I just couldn't get, couldn't get my head around it. No. Nah. I, I still think it's the weirdest thing ever. But when, when I was talking about trends, trends happen so quickly now. Yes. There will be another. Yeah. There will be another and it's, trend. And what is that? What is that? Tra- you know, we don't, we don't know, but it's always attached to opportunity and money. Yeah. And people don't want to miss out. Mm-hmm. And then before you know it, you're talking, your nan's talking about it. Oh, absolutely. Um, but the thing is, with an NFT, when they said about the t shirt thing, yeah. you can do that without an NFT. Yeah. So I was like, well, you don't need an NFT to have a exactly. trademark. Exactly. You know, you just need a logo. The, the time I knew it, it was fully gone was I got a taxi, missed the last train, one, two, three in the morning, something like that. Yeah. Had a night out. And the taxi driver's sort of like, you know, what do you do? I don't know, mate. Small talk. <laughs> and uh, I just literally said, oh, art gallery. And he went, oh, I've been reading all about these NFTs, you know. And, and I was like, oh, yeah, you know, just playing really dumb. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I said, yeah, I know a thing or two. Actually, you know, we've we've been involved in a few projects. And he was hounding. He was like, give me a number. He hounding me. Like, the next day, the day after, how do I buy one? How do I buy one? And I was like, mate, you don't want to buy one. And that's when I knew that, it had just gone berserk. Yeah. Just yeah. gone, you know, totally out of control. Um, 
and yeah, I, I don't think I've heard from a single NFT advocate, big time. I don't know. Where are those people now? I don't know. You know, where, where are they? I was reading, you know, earlier that, that Logan Paul, what did he... Crypto say. 620 grand he paid or something there or thereabouts for one and it's worth $10 now. Oh, not his. Oh, no, is that not his? He, he had a thing called CryptoZoo, which is like creating a huge no. storm. Yeah, not his. Uh, he purchased an NFT. Oh, really? Probably. Yeah. Uh, well, he did the whole thing with Gary V, and that was like yeah. everything. I don't seems see like Gary V much now. Where's. No, I don't know. I don't he was know. everywhere. He's probably hanging out with his uh, crypto pets or whatever yeah. it is. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many weird people. But the board like. thing that you were telling me about earlier is just. I know. Blew my mind. I know. I can't say who, who, but, um, but yeah, they yeah. bought three and then like. No, what you what, did, what you had actually. Oh yeah. No, I did yeah. a video comparing. Unbelievable. Comparing it. I, I created a PSD file and I was like, yeah. you can, anyone can have it and just add on. Cause but then the, the board apes, there was like, I don't know, maybe 50 different things that you just add on and take away. Uh-huh. Right. That's uh-huh. what it was. Yeah. Like a, a hat, a pair of goggles, whatever. So you create a PSD file and you just, take the layers away mm. Add, like mm. basic design yeah yeah just i was like I, couldn't, I just couldn't get my head around it we were getting approached by we had a consortium that's how they were you know put in front of us and it was a well-known spanish bank yeah whose heir to the throne or the bank or whatever else was involved in an nft project and I looked at it and I was just like, that's a scam. That's just, this is just total, total yeah. scam. Yeah. No, no, no. I had people within the business saying, no, no, no. Look, he's got this backing. And I checked him out and it was. And it was like, anyone that buys one of our NFTs will be a lifetime member of our members club that we're opening not too far down the road in bank area. Yeah. And you can have an NFT permanent gallery if you partner with us. And it was just, you know, I could just see it was a scam. And thank God we didn't go anywhere near that. But I was get, we were getting approached daily. New scam, new scam. It, and they were getting more and more sophisticated. We had one where it was a, f- they wanted to partner with us because we were this N- NFT gallery that um, if you invested in an NFT, you got to appear in a film that they were making and you own the royalties to this film and this, this, and this. And it was just a really smooth operator. Yeah. Fantastic salesman, but an out and out con man. Yeah. And and that's when I was just like, oh, just get me back to feet physical on the ground, yeah. physical art, please. Yeah, it is crazy how quick scams can appear. Mm. I just watched that um, Netflix. Uh, Which one? Uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. Mad. Brilliant, like, but that is what it is yeah. like, uh, you know. It, <laughs> like he was the, so brazen, ha- that guy Harvard, as well. Harvard on his yeah. LinkedIn, oh, like all the, But that's how all easy it is. All of them had put that, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, it makes me wonder how much, I mean, money's a scam yeah. in itself, yeah. right? But totally it makes agree, me think yeah. how much money out there is just scam money. Yeah. Because art is known yeah. for laundering yeah. money. Big money laundering, you know, arena. I was going to ask you, what level are you at? You, are you at the presidential like Go on, what's Epstein president? level where you're like launch your money and kids or, <laughs> or you just stick into like thankfully London not. <laughs> yeah, thank God. thankfully not thankfully <laughs> not one of those guys in suits out there <laughs> no like because that's like yeah. you just hear about like the laundering like obviously you got Hillary Clinton doing speeches for 400 grand for like yeah. 20 minutes Man. it's like maybe that doesn't Man. seem that seems a bit sus mm. so it's just speeches are uh, all these mm. things I mean, you, you witnessed it in the in the public sphere yeah. of the scams. Yeah. You know, not like the high level ones seem a bit boring now. Yeah, you know, four hundred grand for, you know, Hunter Biden's art. Yeah, what, yeah. what yeah. are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. He's like, was he, he probably smoking crack I with know. the actual artist that did it? Right, I don't know. Um, oh but God, when Ka- I, I, Kanye I don't want to kill put, myself. I'm not no, going to no, kill no, myself. Yeah, you don't, don't get yourself <laughs> sued in too many areas. The, you, Kanye yeah. West put a po- uh, tweet out when he was going through that phase. Do you remember when he was um, getting dropped by every brand possible? Yeah, yeah. And he put a tweet out. He said, no more NFT like pitches. I'm not interested in a single NFT. I'm just interested in land, farming, and like real things. And I was like, yeah. 
maybe this guy actually hasn't lost it because you know he must have been getting approached to do it every nft drop possible yeah. but um yeah that going back to that bitcoin i mean you've got very young very hungry ambitious but very clever nothing to lose nothing to lose yeah. you see it on the streets of, of of london you know in terms of you know people that are pretty game in in any eventuality but i'm talking about very clever young kids who are 15 6 18 you know and that they almost like look at i mean i'm 34 i'd be called an old so and so now yeah and these guys are very very clever but they're so they no shame yeah do you know what i mean and yeah. i just think i wonder what they would be like in 10 years plus when they're at the school gate and it's like that guy's dad did this. Do you know what I mean? And that just yeah, yeah. stays with you. Yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. you, I don't know. I don't know. I, um, it's that Andrew Tate vibe as well. I watched that thing the other day, which blew my mind. So yeah, there's lots of funny comings and goings, but that Bitcoin blew my mind. And um, I just like traditional, you know, what you can see, what you can feel, what you can touch. I know art has a reputation for money laundering etc i understand that but yeah. you're selling a physical asset to someone and supporting an artist's career is totally different to yeah. the next get rich quick scheme well every industry has got that there's like one percent of yeah. it yeah i think the original the reason i thought about art as like money laundering is because that hugh grant film which hugh grant film was where that? he's like eh, you know he's like marries into the mob no it's yeah he he's an art dealer but he's, yeah. his wife is part of the mob and then, I, and then I, I haven't even seen this film. You haven't seen it? No. And then, so it's so good. Cause it, it, it's that I'm famous line. I'm going to have to watch this. Yeah, yeah. So he, marry, <laughs> he marries this woman and she's, her dad's like the mobster or whatever. Yeah. But she's like normal, so a teacher or whatever. Yeah. And then all this art starts just turning up at the gallery. And it's like this, like where they're like being killed and stuff. And, it, and, and then they've got like people bidding and they're like, you know, like, you know, like these mobsters that own yeah, money. They're like bidding 100 grand. Yeah. And it's just a funny film, but that's... Mm. Um, that you got to watch that. That's I when need I to first watch that. Heard about it? Yeah, probably like late nineties, early two thousands. Yeah. Um, Mickey Blue Eyes. Oh, Mickey Blue Eyes. Mickey Blue Eyes. That's um, is that Hugh Grant? Hugh Grant. Yeah. Yeah. Mickey Blue Eyes. Yeah. Hugh Grant. It's not got De Niro in it. No. 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 Okay, no, no Mickey no, no. Blue Eyes. I've Mickey, heard of Mickey Art Blue Eyes. Okay. Need to watch it. Need to watch it. It's brilliant. Yeah. 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 That's where where I first heard of it. The thing I watched the other day, yeah, was um, with the kids, was the original Mr. Bean. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> with the art the, piece, the TV show or the film? No, the the film, the first oh, film, right. yeah, yeah. Um, where he has to look after a piece of art. And I was looking at just laughing at <laughs> laughing away with the kids, but then it turns into merchandise. And I was like, uh, "Have you seen it?" No, that's funny. I, well, maybe years back. Yeah, yeah. That's I, I that, that's how cultured I am. I'm watching <laughs> the original. You're watching Mickey Blue Eyes. You, you've and gone there I am. NFT New York and everything down to Mr. Bean's That's probably when I've really lost it. Yeah. <laughs> the straight jacket. Um, I read this uh, article about you uh, incentivizing staff yes. to not pull sickies. Mm. Right. First of all, incentivizing staff. To, to, to work is mm. like pretty crazy right no. like but nowadays i keep seeing like mark cuban arguing with elon musk on twitter mm. about really? dei you know diversity yeah equity and inclusion mm -hmm. and he's like well why haven't you got a small asian woman on your basketball on the mavs you know if it's yeah. all about that yeah so this whole banter thing's going on at the moment i've not um, even picked up on that haven't you no. oh, it's so funny no. it's like it's it's just good entertainment. Yeah. America's great for entertainment, like <laughs> politics. It's like my reality show. My missus watches reality stuff. And I, I, You're I, just watching yeah. US politics. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. And, uh, um, but yeah, this whole, so I saw the article mm. and it, like, did you get in trouble for that or not? Or was no. it not too bad? No. It I reads mean, like you did. Touch wood. Which article was that? Was that it, in It's the... where you offered 50 quid for um, people oh, to Oh yeah, that was cash. totally blown out of proportion. Um, I, I went, I went, I went, I went on to. Uh, that's when I knew what, what I the media is oh, like. No, no. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was like, wasn't it one where it said um, uh, owner CEO slammed or backward way of thinking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, it was an incentive to. I think I said something along the lines of, um, if someone gets somewhere, we say, you know, come in and we're going to pay. And people are like, well, what if they get COVID and you're spreading this? And you're just like, oh. oh. Uh. So there, 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 there is such thing as bad PR. 
Yeah. There is. That wasn't the greatest. I didn't read it badly, though. No, no, because... I was like, this is a normal bloke yeah. saying, yeah, don't, don't be sick. Any, any successful like, person that I've spoken to, any winner has said, mate, bought off a duck's back, obviously. Yeah. But then you would have... I, I, I got off that um, uh, interview and it literally uh, pinged its message and someone had taken the time. These people do exist. Capital letters, really angry. How dare you? You must, you're a disgraceful owner, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I actually look after people. You know, <laughs> I give them a job. I help them as best as I... What the f- do you do? Yeah. You know, you, you you do sort of um, have to hold back a bit, but yeah, I yeah I, I incentivize people to do well at their job, and if yeah. they do well, they get rewarded. Yeah, that's life. Yeah, it's there's weird. not many people like that that I speak to you about now. It's nice and refreshing to hear you say the same thing, but there is a real wokey culture, and I, I know you could go, "Oh, well, you're in art. What do you expect?" Well, yeah, I am in art, but I've had. I, at one stage, had half, literally half female, half male working in the business. And then I was like, well, why don't we have a female artist? We need a more, you know, more female, we need a black artist, you know, white artist, an Indian artist. They're, they're the worst, I find. They're, 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 the, yeah. they're the ones with agendas. Like, yeah, yeah. You, you pick someone on talent, no? Is that, is that not how, it, how it works? Merit. Or merit. You know? Yeah. Um, and I've, ne- I, I've worked with every type of artist you could possibly imagine. But there was this like, real, at one point in time in the business, this real aggressive, negative, wokey culture. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And that was, we had to just stamp that out as quickly as we possibly could. Um, and people drop their misogynistic bomb very, very quick and easy. Keywords. As well. You know, like, keywords. Yeah. And then you actually ask them, what, what, why? And they just can't, they can't back it up because it's just the word. You're yeah. just going to use, spit like NFTs. What's an NFT? You know, misogynistic. Yeah, and then you ask why it's got value. You're like, uh, what are you asking me that for? I used to say that to people. I used to say, um, when they would picture me NFTs, I'd go, well, what's this? And they'd be like, oh, just NFT, uh, well, just NFT it. It's almost like when we say, just Google it. Yeah. If you want to get an answer, just Google it. Go on, just get it. People go, no, oh, just, just, if you want to make money out of that art, just NFT it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I learned a lot about not myself, but also people over that time um so yeah we've yeah we've been on quite a journey i've been on a journey it's interesting because i don't i don't have to deal with anyone anymore luckily Love that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so like I, I mean i have like i have like um gyms and stuff but i'm not like i'm not in there i'm not in there yeah you know like so they have all staff and stuff and i have other things but um i minimum staff what do you struggle or did struggle with with people or staff what would you i, I don't like managing people why so because I, uh, I just don't like it. Yeah. I just don't like. I don't like telling people what to do. Okay. You know, I just don't like it. I even don't, yeah, I do, even I, though you know, it would be good for them or the right thing to do. You just no. I I just like to do my own thing. Okay. You know, I like to do things my way. Yeah. You know, and th- that's basically, yeah. I don't, and I haven't got time for people like vegans. I haven't yeah. got time for them. Yeah. Like anyone, you know, I, I, I was vegan at one point, mm-hmm. you know, like I tried it just yeah. to see, but I, like just st- stuff I read, you know, and yeah. you know, like the thing that when I read your thing, I was laughing, yeah. like having, I was having a coffee. I was like early this morning, I was reading it yeah. and I was just like, what's crazy. So I think, I'll, I think overall, so I'll go into my company mm-hmm. and I'll like, I'll notice things that, the, my business partners don't know, notice because yeah. they're there every day, right? Yeah. It's like if you're yeah. looking at art, uh, uh, you, you know you're there every mm-hmm. day. If someone goes in, ah, uh, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. So I, I look at things like that. So when I look at that, first of all, I'm like, so glad I haven't got to deal with dickheads all day. Yeah. And then um, secondly, I think, I think we're going to go full circle, mm. right? Because it only takes oh yeah. oh yeah six months of you dealing with people like that to go, that's never happening again mm-hmm. for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. I'd rather just work on my own, yeah. you know, and work harder than deal with all these idiots. So yeah. I feel like that trend, and now Twitter doesn't ban people mm-hmm. for saying COVID's bullshit, yeah. which everyone knew anyway. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So, so now that freedom of speech is back to normal, I feel like we're going full circle and that peak wokeness is gone. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And, you know, this whole thing about oh, with Elon Musk yes. talking yeah. about like hiring people on airlines. Mm -hmm. Have you seen all no. this? For like DEI. But when people realize that all this is about ESG scores so that you get money off like the elite and World Economic Forum, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. When the public, I think everyone's starting to realize this. Mm. When they fully realize this, everyone that was like talking about you're a misogynist because yeah. you said I'm late for work. Yeah. You're like, hold on a minute. Yeah. Yeah. You know, all that bullshit yeah. is just going to be fallen. And like you say, you know, like 16s, if they're scamming in 10 years at a school, yeah. everyone knows. Yeah. Everyone's going to so know true. all these knobheads yeah. that came to work and called you misogynist yeah. because you said they were late or, you mm -hmm. know, whatever it is. You look mm -hmm. like a homeless person today, dress yeah. up properly. Yeah. This is a professional environment. Oh yeah. no, you know, whatever. <laughs> I think that's all going to just go soon. And I, I, I always said this, you know, I'm older, mm. you know, and it, you're so trends, right though. It's the trends. Yeah. Like they come and go, but people don't forget. Mm. And, you know, and that's the difference now. And so you think about it differently with kids as well. Don't you think there's no way I would want one of my kids to be woke yeah. or to be living that fickle, fickle world. Um, and I, I was literally finding myself, tiptoeing around my own business yeah. where people were like, oh, you can't say that. You'd have a bit of banter with someone. Yeah. Um, and, oh my God, it was it was just like World War Three had erupted, you know? Yeah, I saw this um, I saw this meme the other day, on it? Yeah. This is so funny. Boomers, I can't believe I wore bell bottoms. Yeah. Gen X, I can't believe I wore parachute pants. Millennials, yeah. I can't believe I wore skinny jeans. Gen Z, I can't believe I cut my dick off. <laughs> <laughs> that has got that to stop. Bang on. That has got that, to stop. That is, that is bang on. Like literally, <laughs> like literally, it's like where are we going? Like yeah. what is going? We on? can't go much further than that, can you? It's, have you seen the Ricky Gervais? That thing? Armageddon, where he's like, yeah. he goes, he goes, we've evolved through so species, yeah. killed dinosaurs, yeah. blah blah blah, yeah. and now scared of words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that's that got was to stop. so good to watch it yeah. Christmas Day. Yeah. yeah, it's got to stop, isn't it? Like, I, I, I do hope it does that. Uh, I, I truly do. I, I think it would take a little bit longer um, than maybe you know, a couple of years. Yeah, but it's got to. Yeah, I have an entrepreneurs club. I don't know if you know British Entrepreneurs Club, mm. and it's all owners of companies. Yeah, and we have all private conversations. Do yeah. it's really really good, and um. I've spoke to a couple of people recently uh -huh. and they've said the same thing, like their staff, you know, and I, I'm, you know, not discriminating or anything, but mm. it's mostly female. Yeah. In, in, from oh, yeah. what I've e yeah. experienced in conversation, it's mostly women uh -huh. that are saying all these things. Yeah. Um, so it, it's an interesting thing. I'm not there you know, my, every day. But. My, my issue with people yeah. in the workplace is when someone when they jump on a bandwagon right yeah. so straight away mental health yeah. it's almost like stops so when you when you see some of this like um like not you can't call it controversy because that's kind of like underplaying it but yeah. scandals is in like pedophile types and underage children such and such has got mental health can't go near him so so my friend who's a, who's you know high level solicitor said as soon as they do that you you can't go anywhere near it media band so you have people now going i'm so sorry i've done shit at work and just caused world war three and i'm not coming in uh mental health yeah mental health and i got my uh dad into the business at the beginning of last year he'd been in a corporate waste management world for 25 years and semi-retired and i said right we could do with some corporate structure and I, even conversations with him, I just say, no, dad, we're not doing that. <laughs> no, you know, well, you can't do that. You're going to get sued. It's like, fucking sue me. Yeah. Because you have to say no at some point yeah, in time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. people were just taking the piss. Really? Oh, yeah. What's yeah. the worst one you had? I had two, I had two former uh, employees yeah. who absolutely went for me went for me big time they basically bullied a girl said that she was only getting business because she was sleeping with clients yeah. 
So straight away, just playing that card. And I defended her at a Christmas party once. I just said, you're bullying. You know, it sounds to me like you're jealous. I was just trying to draw. It sounds yeah. to me like you're jealous. Just chill out, you know, relax. And I thought it was over. I thought it was done. Christmas came, went into the new year, and they just stirred it up. Oh, James, you know, can't believe he's this misogynistic. He's got a, he's only wants, oh, white men, white men. I was like, what? One of the, one of the girls, I'd given her a pay rise by like, 60 70 percent for because she was doing like twice as much work I mean, more or less she was saying so we gave her a pay rise i treated her to a spa day um with with friends and stuff like that with her friends and paid for her to go to watch a, uh, a football match with her family because she was a big football fan and yeah she just went for me it was almost like the more you gave the more they took. And I lost two, my, my dad's first month in the business, he had to phase two girls out, had to go through a HR you know, process. Ugh. And it was like, all they had was, oh, he, he has said in meetings, in sales meetings, yeah. I, I'm one of these people that I don't care. So if someone doesn't want to do business with me for whatever reason, because of something I yeah. say, fuck them. Yeah. I don't care. There's plenty more people out there. Yeah. So, um, I, <laughs> so essentially, I had to say, look, go away. You know, su sue me. My dad was like, they're going to sue you, and they're going to say this. And I said, what is this? Apparently, in a sales meeting, I said to my team, if you've got a guy that's wanting to buy a piece of art, you've got to get him. You've got to get him hard. You've got to make sure that you know. And apparently, that is sexual misconduct. X, Y, Z. And I'm like, what, so, really? So I just, I just fought it and we had to pay them, you know, a month or two off in the end. But they suddenly thought they could sue me for everything and take the business down. And I was like, no, I'm not having it. So you're not to pay them a month? I had to pay them like a month, maximum six weeks. Perfect. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Bye-bye. Like cheap. Yeah. Yeah. But, but M what imagine was Imagine marrying case? one of those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. That should come with a warning. I know. You know? And it was, it was like, white guy, you know, got... Like, it's, what are they reading? Because I'm not... These are what white are they girls saying it about a what... Like, honestly, they're, they're the worst. They're the ones that have agendas or have some kind of racism element. Yeah. Painful. Yeah. Painful. This is why I don't like managing people. Yeah. I totally get it. There's no risk. Yeah. You know? If you only manage yourself, what's the risk? Yeah not working hard enough you know yeah agreed i mean those girls would probably see themselves <laughs> yeah, you know, literally <laughs> but they hated each other but they're all ganging up oh my oh, god, god. Sue, sue themselves in court honestly <laughs> <laughs> run run to each side like he said oh, this my. but oh, it was god. like my mental health I, uh, and a new year's day just got new year's eve just gone yeah female artist who was a struggling artist yeah came into the gallery five years ago yeah I, w I would like you to represent me the art director at the time said trust me let's go with her blah blah for yeah. whatever reason business relationship broke down not in a bad way and we said we made a book for her we paid a huge amount of money for this book release we got her loads of sales she made a fortune she bought a house in a certain part of the uk oxford there you go she bought a house in oxford and she got her own studio from nowhere like overnight two years New Year's Eve, my mental health, this gallery dropped me a year ago. They dropped me and, um, and shady business in the art world. And it's like, so you want to slander. So you, what you want to do yeah. is you just want to come out and attack. And it was actually my um, solicitor, lawyer, mate, he, he sent it to me. I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I'm dealing with that. So New Year's Eve, there I am, sort of like, you know, trying to, manage the kids and manage and, and it can throw you off and people don't get that about business or entrepreneurs and all the risk and all the reward they, they, people don't necessarily like the uk and i watched a, so, uh, a, a podcast on this the other day do you into football yeah so uh, ex leeds um manager said that the uk have this like pity culture of or jealous culture and i i do agree with that and i think that what people don't understand is where you take work home and you go on holiday but you're never really on holiday and you make all these sacrifices you fucking deserve the reward yeah 
at the end of the day. Um, and very few people actually see that. So there I am on New Year's Eve having like th- this, this spat with a former artist who's totally wrong. She wanted to be repaid for artwork that she'd already sold to us. So she'd been paid for the art that she'd sold. Yeah. So it's no longer hers. Yeah. The owner of the art wants to now sell it. So we've put it up for sale yeah. in the gallery and online. She's like, I, I, need, I need money for that. Love, you've already been paid there. Yeah. What don't you get? You you are completely detached. Yeah. You know, it's like the art that you've bought here. They've already you've already bought it. Yeah. Um, and I just had to crazy crazy mate. <laughs> Mugatu. Yeah. <laughs> I'm what gonna you? get you a Mugatu <laughs> outfit. Actually, you should paint Mugatu. Get one of your artists yeah. to paint Mugatu Graffiti, in your building, yeah. Yeah. and just anytime someone says anything, you just yeah. look at him. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's what I would do. Point to the wall. Right, so what's next for you then? So um, fire we- everyone <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, off the back of this podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I would say for for us, it's about going from where we're at to medium-sized business. So I've been very lucky to. I've bought in someone who you'd love him. Uh, he was in charge of selling off the RBS assets when they when the shit hit the fan with them. So he's like had about a billion pounds worth of assets at one stage that he needed to sell off like private jets over in Latvia through to what? Bermuda, like, oh, everything. What's, yeah. he, what's he do? Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> <laughs> How do you resell that? Yeah, it's mad. Yeah. So he, he's come into the business and he's all about process and structure and just growing it. But um, I did kick on with that, that merchandise. And now we've got a, a situation where anyone that buys a physical piece of art with us, there's no other gallery doing this. We give the collector a royalty every single time the merchandise is sold using that image. Yeah. And that's been a real game changer for us. So I'm looking at building um, a platform for that. And I've got another thing up my sleeve with sort of like owning shares in an artist's career. Not owning any art, but almost like a stock market, marketplace for artists. Um, and yeah. Has that been done before or not? No. That's quite interesting. Yeah. I, I, I think that's a real winner. Uh, Isn't that what... Um uh, the Wolf of Wall Street did with that shoe guy. Oh, uh, what was the shoe brand? Oh, I we think both know it. it. We both yeah, yeah, yeah. Monster. He, but they took him on Madden, Madden shoes. Yeah, is Steve it? Madden. Steve Madden. Steve Madden. Yeah, no, this will be more about people owning a a slice of the pie in the artist's future revenue and what they go on to do. Okay, so you can invest in setting them up. PR set up audiences artwork etc like a company there was a there was a yeah. there was a big collapse with a business called football index i don't know if you ever it's no. where people could own shares in mbappe and messi and his future value goes on to you yeah, know, yeah. No. do x y and z it, yeah it was a big collapse but i i think it was a, a fantastic concept just the wrong people leading it and obviously it ended up being a scam but i see there being a real gap in the market for art to work in a similar fashion Supporting young artists and established artists too. Well, I suppose you know what Saatchi did then, mm. originally. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's what he did. Yeah, He made all Tracy M and all them lot famous because yeah. he was an advertising guy, saw an opportunity, had a mm. gallery on the South Bank and was like, well, I'll just take people out of college, Yeah, do PR for them. Mm-hmm. She can just piss in her bed for two weeks, <laughs> and we'll, we'll we'll tell everyone. We'll tell everyone Imagine it's that up. initial conversation. <laughs> so I've got an idea. What you've been doing last yeah. week? <laughs> Sleeping in my bed, smoking cigarettes. Perfect. There you go. Job done. A million quid. Say no more. Don't touch the bed. Loads of PR. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you do, roll around in it. But that's yeah, what, it's mad. Yeah. My background's advertising. Yeah. And so, like, originally, and uh, so I learned about all that, and yeah, all all, all that Tracy Emin stuff. Yeah. Is, um, the art world yeah. is, is nuts. It is it is bonkers. Yeah. Um as you, you know, as you already know. So yeah, very much continuing on, on that path and feet on the ground. I'm just glad you didn't say you're gonna start artists doing YouTube boxing. <laughs> start doing everything then. I would have a few <laughs> fights with them. I would I would have you a few fights. All your own stuff. <laughs> oh, believe me. <laughs> no, not former staff. Even artists are hard. Are they? Oh, oh God. God. Ah. Oh. It's, it's a Not weird all of one. them, obviously, it, but there's a lot of dickheads out there. I bet. Entitled pricks. Yeah. Yeah. 
Do make you know no mistake. Do you, know what, do you know what's funny? It's like back in the day, I used to read about artists and I, I used to think, oh, I might become an artist because mm. I read all the books and th there was like a, these guys, there was these guys doing these mad stunts and they were selling their book for like a grand in the end. And like they made like a million quid and they burnt it or something like that in, mm. in like London. Mm. But it was just all PR. So yeah. it, everything was attached to good PR back then. PR is mm. not the same now. You can't really, you know, back then you could, put someone on TV in an interview and they could drink, like Tracy him and get drunk. And everyone yeah. would be like, oh, she got drunk. Yeah, like she's crazy cool. artist. Yeah, yeah. Right, f money just funnels in. Yeah. I, I don't think you can get away with it. You've got to be more clever now with PR. Mm. But Damien suppose, Hurst is the genius of it. Yeah. You know. Another Versace guy, wouldn't he? Exactly, yeah. 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 Uh, he doesn't even he, paint his own stuff. He, hey, have you seen some of his YouTube videos? Yeah. Seen any? He's just yeah. literally got the long brush. Yeah. Flicking paint. But grand. Yeah. yeah. Grand. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> but people, he's not hiding that. No. And people, you know, people want to buy into that brand because he's that, you know, fuck it. And I love that. But about his people. circle stuff, it, he doesn't even paint himself. No, he doesn't. So he d he'll do the YouTube stuff, which yeah. is the, oh, um, the gimmick. The 50 foot thing that no yeah. one buys. And it's yeah. like, oh, this is 3 million. Yeah. It's like classic brand. Have you seen where it's like laid out on picture a table like, 20 times a site and in the wet in this warehouse and he's yeah. just like yeah he's not even trying yeah he's he's like uh, laughing yeah he's, he's laughing he literally he is laughing but genius is and it is it genius or is this everyone stupid he's he he's made people stupid <laughs> and it, so therefore he's he's a I genius think, he's just a puppet master it's a bit like nfts whoever created yeah. the first one yeah. just was like yeah and there, then it just was there like, was there was a newspaper um, that did an NFT. I can't remember what it was, and I said, "Right, we're gonna we're gonna buy buy this piece." Yeah. Um, and they did their own auction, and we literally, I was doing it with the, the techie guy, and I was like, "Yeah, bid, all right, let's bid." I was being really sensible about these bids, and then all of a sudden, I'm not joking, it literally went from a grand to. 10 then up to 30 or something stupid and this one wallet or one buyer was outbidding himself yeah so you could actually see that at that time and i was just like oh the warning signs were there why didn't i yeah. trust a bit of that but like i say no no, no regrets on things well, but it's, a, it's a good way of tax avoidance yeah you could you could set up three wallets yeah you know? see i never did anything like that no i i i, I saw how it was working right but yeah, you could basically write off a million quid so you don't pay the tax on it. Yeah. So you, if you lose a million quid in 21 because you bought NFTs, then it's tanked. Yeah. But people were buying them off themselves, so they were purposely losing money. Right. And that's what was happening. People, were, Say you made 10 million quid in crypto, Yeah. but you wanted to show a loss of 10 million, or mm. you buy an NFT and lose 10 million, <laughs> right? And then you don't pay any tax. Mm. So that's kind of... yeah. And, but there's super clever people that are way ahead of the game, mm. you know, on the Ethereum blockchain that are doing all this stuff because they understand how it works. And you've got yeah. all the idiots around the world going, oh, NFT on yeah. me, 500 quid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. bro. On yeah. the WhatsApp group, <laughs> like whatever. <laughs> but really the person that makes the money is the guy that knows how yeah. it works. It's like um, Warren Buffett. Yeah. They make money because all the idiots are just uh -huh. gambling at the bottom. Mm -hmm. and, that's how, and that's what I think happened with NFTs. Oh, absolutely. The smart people for will throw a trend out there and mm -hmm. it's stuck yeah. because someone gave Eminem a uh, an, uh, bored ape. Yeah. And they were like, oh, he paid one. No, that's yeah. a bullshit PR story. Of course he's not online buying bored apes yeah. for a million and he wants to go a party but with weirdos. If, if you said that at the time, did you find that you were a neghead, naysayer? You were someone that's like, what do they call it? A hater. No, you're sort of non-believer. No, no, no. I got that. I got given. That. You were, you were in, but people were trying to make money around you. No one was trying to make money True. around me. So I did the video, um, comparing them to Fire Festival. Yeah. What, at what, the time yeah. when it was like everyone was talking about NFTs. Yeah. You know, I, I was and like, did he end up selling NFT or doing something like that? That guy. Which guy? Wasn't he doing sports tickets in from Fire Fest? Towards the end, just as he's about to get banged up, he's got one one of his young, oh, yeah, young he's like on the scamming, phone pitching yeah. it. Just yeah. never ended. Yeah. Some people just don't have yeah. a, you know. But the the problem is, I remember being like eighteen, mm. but, but it's different for me. It was a bit uh, uh, more old school. Like you just had to get a job back then. Yeah. But like being eighteen now, you can set up a website. Yeah. 
You can set up. You can say you're f- going. At, you went to Harvard. Yeah. I said I got a two one at uni. I got a yeah. third. Yeah. Like yeah. no one cared anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Like back then, I was like, yeah, I barely made it for uni. Yeah. I was in Hawaii most of the time. <laughs> you know, like so I didn't even go to my graduation. I was surfing in Hawaii. Someone texted me going, "Oh, you, right. you going to the graduation tomorrow?" I was like, "What?" Was that tomorrow? what? I was like, oh, I didn't even I know. The flight. And do you know what I said? I went, look, worst mm. case scenario, I'll just photo my sh- Photoshop myself mm. with a with a thing <laughs> and then show my nan. Because my yeah, nan's probably yeah. the only one that cares. Yeah. No one cares if I go to uni. Yeah. Um some of the some some of the uh the uni talk as well that I've I've seen and been heard, been privy to. I had one of these girls that ended up leaving. She said, um, she's never run a business. She must now be 21, 22, 23, there or thereabouts. And when people were saying she's too young to me, she's too young to be your head of this, isn't this? I'd say, well, you know, age is just a number. Look at Zuckerberg, how young he was with Facebook. And, you know, you can't think like that now. You know, if, the, if she's capable, she's capable, irrespective yeah. of, mm-hmm. of, of the age. And we had this debate. And ultimately, <laughs> I'm going to make the final decision. This is her and I now. And she said to me, bearing in mind, her, you know, the age side she's never run a business before never had employees she said you really need a growth mindset what's and that? i was like fucking hell really what's that like again it's just something out of uni buzzword growth mindset and oh, that really fucked me off gave you the ick yeah that's uh, uh, so i i i let her have it there <laughs> and then i was like who are you talking to like what have you done what have you actually done? You've gone to uni, heard that buzzword. Yeah. Growth mindset. Because I was like, no, we're not doing this. We're not going to do that campaign. We're going to suss this out. I've just lost a lot of money on NFTs. So we're going to just, you know, be a little bit more cautious. We're oh, going to hire some mindset. normal people. You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you go, to, you know, did, oh, honestly. It was, it was like a, a time in my life which was just a blur. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's settled down now then. Yeah. I'm going to come to your gallery, actually. Yeah, please do. Yeah, I might come. Are you in there today? Yeah. I might come this afternoon. Yeah, come down. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I've always had a fascination with art because... I can see, yeah. I used to read it. I, I, I got this this stuff here. Mm. Um, that one I did on Photoshop. But that um, th- these two here, uh-huh. part of a three that were in a coffee shop once. Wow. Back in 2008, okay. seven, six. So this one here. That one and that one. Same guy. Okay. I remember I offered him 500 quid for free yeah. and I went and picked him up from his like shed that he was living in <laughs> and uh, just brought him back. Yeah, but Love they've it. been here ever since. Love it. You know, but like, I don't even know who the guy is. <laughs> I don't even think he wrote his name on it. But that's the other thing. What Artists don't get that. If someone just likes it, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. You know, and I would even listen to some artists go, I'm not selling my art to him or her. He's not at this sort of level or not, not worthy. It's like, discriminating honestly and they're the ones that go oh no you know it's got to be this and it's got to do that and on the face of things but no Who, okay top three artists right now that you like in your gallery even wherever mm. who you think we should be looking out for looking out for as yeah. in like new up and coming who are cool yeah i'm gonna be biased with one guy a guy called clark reynolds uh he is blind and he is known as the blind Braille artist. So everything he does is in Braille. Right. And really fucking cool guy. Great story. Um, he talks really well. Very, very likable. He's doing things with Lego at this moment in time, which is really cool. He took himself off to India. Never really travelled before. Got himself into Forbes, you know, for, for, for doing that. And he is just someone that you want to see do well. He's got a child who um is severely disabled but he's kept going he hasn't sort of sat back and gone i'm going to claim i'm going to do this this and this he wants to make art his voice and purpose so we're doing quite a bit with him that's cool another artist um uses sort of female portraiture through uh, through the form of palette knife um you know techniques she's fantastic and her name's zara muse m-u-s-e gotta give her a shout out that's a bigger trend isn't it those portraits She's who's who's that, the French artist that started it all? There was uh, the artist that I saw do really well from the similar technique was an artist called Elena Gowell. And I would say yeah. that. Have you heard of Philip Colbert? No. He's another artist that, that he calls himself the Lobster Man. Maybe. Francois Neely. 
No. She's the French artist yeah. that started. She did a portrait of Obama. I saw it in a in a hotel in um, Marseille. Oh, really? And I was like, this is nuts. But now her stuff's like crazy. This is like, that was 10 years ago. What's but, her stuff going for now? Do you see? Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah. it's a lot. It's a huge amount. But yeah, she started the... Uh, that kind it's of as trend, easy as that. And so that one, and then who else? Third one. Uh, and I would say, truth be told, it's not an artist that I, you know, work with. But having seen what he does, is Philip Colbert, C O L B E R T, just doing a huge amount over in Asia. Yeah. Um, and very quirky, very cool, very interesting guy. So yeah, I I I believe that those those three will will do well. You'll see. You know Thierry Noir. Yeah. 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 So he actually, because this is, this is an Airbnb, mm -hmm. he, there's a gallery around the corner ages ago. And mm -hmm. he was like, oh, we've got Thierry Noir doing a whatever, because he paints around Shoreditch. Yeah. And um, he was like, can, can he stay in your flat for a week, but got no money? I was like, what? I was like, hold what on a minute. This? I was like, sure, this is ages ago, before yeah. he started painting in Shoreditch. Right. I was like, what? A, I've been in Shoreditch so long that I've, at least I've got so many of these stories. I was like, and I was like, okay, cool. Give me some art, three pieces of art. And uh, he said, okay, come around the gallery, just choose what you want. Clever. <laughs> so I went, right, I've got one in my house in Old Town, yeah. which is like, was five and a half grand on at the exhibition. And then two of the other things I'll show you downstairs, yeah. these massive boards <laughs> that were just used for the gallery. And I remember we were just carting them through short. It's just chucked <laughs> them in here. <laughs> no one really knows. What, but, for a week's free stay? Yeah, six days. So he stayed here for six days and I got these three pieces of art. Do you know what? I'd rather Don't sell them. Get. I'd rather, if you want to sell them yeah, for me, because yeah. I, I said to him, do you want it back? And he went, yeah, 500 quid. I went, what? What, what? are you talking about? This is years back. I was like, you'd sell it for that five and a half That is a classic grand. example. If you don't ask, you don't get. Yeah. Love that. I do the same. How much are know? they worth now? Jeez. Big pieces as well. I'll show you. They're massive. Sh human size. But they're just on, on boards. They need framing. But the mm, one mm. at my house, wow. um, well, it's worth 500 quid. I don't know. It's worth could be worth five grand. It's not worth really anything. Whatever worth, someone's, a more, a lot, worth a lot more than 500 quid. Whatever someone's prepared yeah. to pay. Yeah. But yeah, it's just like, it's just yeah, the, the one he did on the canvas was quite good. But the thing, what the other funny thing is at the back behind the wall, yeah. and there was like four students painting his stuff. Oh, you're joking. No, it was just wow. like, I was like, it's just like Damien Hurst. Yeah. No, he's not even doing it. He's just... just they get to that stage where it is just a production line. Yeah. They have a team of people doing it. I mean, you know, there's no, that's the thing with art. It's very, um, it's very uh, fabricated. Mm. Some people, of it, some of it, some yeah. of it. But People don't like the commercial aspects of it. Yeah. You want to know that the artist painted your piece. Yeah, of course you do. Like at the minimum, at the yeah. bare minimum, yeah. you know, not someone yeah. is like some student at the back on eight pound fifty yeah. an hour who's, <laughs> who's signed an NDA and can't say a word, but yeah. they're, they're actually the real artist. Yeah, yeah. But there's incredibly talented people out there that would never get recognised because they aren't they they have no real story or no real hook or or even in some cases I know people that are just too frightened to put their Sell art themselves. out there, which is yeah. fantastic. They just don't want to have that rejection. Well, that's one they, they need. It's a real shame. Yeah. A lot of people can't yeah. sell themselves. A huge number of people. Yeah. That huge. Is, that, is a, that is a problem for artists, really. And you've got to. I watched the Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, sort of documentary on Netflix, and he, even when something that struck a chord for me was when he was promoting films, Terminator 2, 3, whatever, he was going out and selling and actually having to sell the film and yeah. why people should buy tickets and watch and yeah. buy the film. And. Artists don't do that. Yeah. They just think, Mum, Dad, I've got some news. I've signed with a gallery. And that's just not enough. Yeah. The gallery need these hooks. You yeah. need to go out and build these, you know, these networks. Yeah. And there's an artist who does that fan better than anyone I've ever seen. And that's a guy called Robbie Walters, who has got the most ridiculous talent. He was... Um, adopted as a kid his younger brother uh, died in a house fire he survived in the house fire his brother was three he was six you know he's got this warm about him and this pain and sorrow and he's turned it into art and he you he takes um things that people discard and turns it into art and it, how he does it is incredible right. and he whenever i've gone out and seen him everyone knows him 
because he puts himself out there. Yeah. And that's why he deserves everything that he's going to get and more. Do a lot of artists now use Instagram? Because I see them all the time. Yeah. You know, and they blow up. Yeah. And they make a ton. Do you get people, do do your artists, do you make them do that? Or is it just a natural thing? Yeah. Yeah, we we encourage that for yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, there's a new sort of uh, phrase that's been coined called red red chip artist. So you need like a blue chip artist is someone that it's like a blue chip type company, you know, yeah. FTSE 100 company. What they've done and where they've gone and how they've you know performed over the years. Um, and then you have like red chip, which is artists who are young, up and coming that just hit 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 the scene right way right place right time yeah, yeah. and do very well and uh, that is driven by performance of instagram right so yeah that's now a thing yeah i see i saw one that joe rogan shared and then the guy obviously just blew up massively really? yeah it just takes one yeah that's one, it one bit of endorsement yeah mad isn't it yeah well it's, it's a great game it's a great business <laughs> maybe i'll start doing some art do some art yeah and he can sell it for me done but you've got to do it now after what you said. You've actually got to be the oh, artist. Yeah, yeah. Can't I'll, have a team. Yeah, I'll paint it. I'll just paint yeah. it yellow. Well, you said you don't like people too much. So just paint it yellow. I'm a yeah. perfect artist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <I'm a> depressed. <laughs> um, all right, cool. Well, dude, thanks for coming Thank in. Thank you for inviting me. That really appreciate chat. your time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you were worried that we... I, I thought like, you were going to grill me here. No, no, no. Yeah. no NFT, Little old me. I, I love it. I love looking from the outside at everything. Yeah, I think that's one of the benefits I have now, like not being in amongst it all. Mm-hmm. I get to, I've done all that. Did my twenties, like running around Shoreditch, doing everything, trying to make money, all that kind yeah. of stuff. Done it all. Luckily, it wasn't filmed. You know, no one on Instagram, <laughs> me at parties, like you know, like whatever. But um, you know, so it's like I'm fascinated by young, younger guys. You know, yeah. e- even younger. You know, you're only in your thirties, but. Um, fascinated by how it all works and mm. you know i'm lucky i don't have to participate yeah especially with the whole staffing thing it's like it's you know i can i, I honestly couldn't no nah, i couldn't do it energy draining and seeing some of the crap on instagram i've seen the the people i've seen flaunt wealth watch car this is yeah. in this lifestyle the the bigger the flaunter yeah. The more I I know, because I actually know them, yeah. they're they're a, they're a faker. Yeah. They're a complete, just built on sand, complete load of shit. Yeah. And it's it's the silent assassins that are, you know, pe- shrewd operators that they keep. Yeah. The, you know what what's what's the saying? Wealth whispers. Yeah. So true. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, do you know I, do you know why I think that is? Mm. It's because there's an element of them that probably could go to jail. If they were found out, <laughs> <laughs> I noticed the quietest wealthy people have done something dodgy. Saying, right. yeah. I'm because uh, I'm like I've done well, like yeah. luckily, touch wood. Yeah, but I'm like I'm legit, mm. so I've got nothing to worry it's about. Different, it's different. You know, I, if you can back it up, there's people that I know that yeah. are bluffers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who are wearing their wealth on yeah. a finger, well, let alone got, a wrist? They've got nothing to worry about. Because if anyone investigates them, there, there's nothing there. There's nothing there to take. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The ones that are whispering, yeah. they've got a lot of wealth. I'm one with you. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's what I, I've experienced. So they don't yeah. want to be exposed. Maybe not, or they don't want the hassle. But mm. I, I do find, you know, with the Entrepreneur Club especially, like all legit, like their background check like crazy for us mm. before they get membership. But um, they are all talking about how to promote um, their companies by doing more YouTube, not necessarily YouTube, but like social media and stuff like that. So yeah. that is a big trend. So the legit ones are coming out, yeah. you know, um, and they're, they're, they're watching everyone, you know, post videos and stuff. I was probably like, I felt like I did it late, but three years ago when I, I started to do it, it's actually, I'm like old school, I feel like I'm old school now. Yeah. Because people are asking me and I'm like, I don't know, <laughs> like, what do you want me to tell you? About? I'm talking about the people that literally show a gold watch. Yeah, and then get surprised on an open Instagram that they've been robbed. Oh yeah, my God, that's ridiculous. Yeah, you, Come on. yeah, but I mean, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even buy a watch now. No. You, you got not really like, no. what, well, because of that fear or just as. Just... Well, no, I mean, if you have a nice car and it gets stolen, you can track it, right? Mm. Right, yeah. but if you, if you, I've got a kid, you know, mm. and kids, another one coming. I don't want to walk down the street with a watch on and then 
potentially get stabbed mm. or just robbed. Yeah. You know, even if you just get robbed, that's bad enough because it's a horrible experience, right? Mm. So for me, it's like, it's just not worth the hassle. Yeah. Also, I don't, I don't need to. I don't need to show that. I'm, Agreed. I've, yeah, yeah. You know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So maybe if you ask like a 25 year old me and I saw everyone wearing watches, I'd be like, oh, do I need a watch? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like, is that what? <laughs> do what? I need one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like um, so I'm lucky. I've, I'm like full circle. Mm. I'm like chilling now. Mm. I get to just hang out with who I want to hang out with. Yeah, you know, Thank talk you. to who I want to talk to, spend time with you know who I want to. Yeah, it's um, refreshing. It's nice, you know. Um, so yeah, so we are. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to come to your art gallery. Do, do you know? This is the first podcast back for a while, and I I said to like Helen and stuff, um, who deal with all the guests and everything, is that you know like Louis Theroux. Yeah. where he like he'll yeah. do a bit where he's like filming with them yeah. and then he'll do the interview yeah i was like i want to move it into that style yeah good shout um and um if i'd have known mm. like beforehand uh i'd have done that today yeah um but maybe I'll, when i do vlogs because yeah. i do i do vlogs for my kids i'll pop down yeah we've got to, um we've got to speak after this anyway yeah Just see if you want to sell that up yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just go and sell everything in here. Nothing this is worth walls. nothing. Like I did that on Photoshop. Took me five minutes. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thanks for coming. Top man. Thanks so much. All right, man. Cheers, John.